YouTube. I'm here to do my prediction video for UFC 265. Let's start at the bottom. The first fight is Johnny Mohose versus Jamie Simmons. To me, Jamie Simmons doesn't look like he's UFC level. He looks like he has decent striking, but that's about it. I think Johnny Mohose is the better overall grappler. I mean, the striking Jamie might have a slight advantage, but I think Johnny just has a huge advantage on the grappling, and I think he'll get it there, and I think he'll win by sub. So I'm picking Johnny to win by first or second round submission. Next is Victoria Leandro versus Melissa Gatto, and these chicks are both pretty well-rounded. Victoria is probably more of a wrestler overall. I think a lot of people are picking Melissa just because they think she's the, the better prospect, but I think Victoria is wrestling strong enough to kind of get the, get this hit to the ground consistently and win by decision. So I'm going to pick Victoria to win by decision. Next is uh, Miles Johns versus Anderson Dos Santos, and to me, Miles Johns looks like he's really, really good prospect. You know, he's got good striking, good wrestling. I think Anderson Dos Santos, you know, he's willing to throw with people, and he is a good jujitsu guy. But I just see Miles Johns avoiding all the submissions and just outpointing Anderson for three rounds, if not eventually winning by TKO. I just think he's got a huge advantage in the boxing and the overall wrestling. I mean, Anderson, like I said, I think he can catch him with a big punch or catch him with the submission, but... I think this is one of those fights where the majority of the time, Miles Johns wins this fight. He doesn't get caught with anything and just wins a dominant decision. Next is Manel Cape versus O'Day Osborne. And Manel Cape did miss weight by 3 pounds. He weighed in 129. Um, to me, these guys are pretty similar. They're both really fast, sharp strikers. They both throw, like, you know, really fast straight punches. Um, O'Day's probably a little bit better with his jiu-jitsu. Cape's a little bit better with his wrestling. I don't think this fight's going to hit the ground too much. Um, it's really just kind of who, who can let their hands go more. And, um, I am leaning towards Cape, but I won't be shocked if O'Day wins this, just because Cape has not looked that great since he's come to the UFC. He doesn't fight like how he did in, in Ryzen. He doesn't just go after guys nonstop. Which is really weird, because I feel like he could push a pace for 15 rounds if he really wanted to. Like, when he fought Horiguchi in Ryzen, they were going nonstop at each other until he got submitted. And that fight, I don't know how long it was, but I think I felt like it was at least a round and a half. And they're, they're like 10-minute round fights in Japan, so that's about 15 minutes. But yeah, I'm going to lean towards Cape. I think that he's just a little bit sharper with his striking, and I think he's going to win with knockout or TKO. Next, we got Karolina Kovalkiewicz versus Jessica Panay. And Jessica Panay, to me, looks like she's, you know... Decent, just not great. I think if she can get this to the ground, she will win by submission, but I just don't see it happening. I think Coralina will be able to keep it on the feet, and if it is on the feet, I think uh, Carolina is a much better striker, and I think she's going to be able to outpoint Jessica for three rounds. So I'm going to pick Carolina Kovalkiewicz to win by a 30 27 decision. Next, we got Ed Herman versus Alonzo Menafield, and for me, the biggest thing in this fight is what happens once Alonzo starts to slow down a little bit because. I think in the first round, he's got a huge speed advantage. But I do think the longer it goes, the more it favors Ed. Because if these guys are slow and they're just throwing in close you know, close to each other, and Ed can kind of force the clinch against the fence, I think he can beat Alonzo up. And because of that, I am leaning towards Ed. Because my biggest thing, too, is I think this hits the ground. Ed's got a big advantage in the jiu-jitsu. And if Alonzo can't finish him in the first, I think that this favors Ed a lot the longer it goes. So I'm going to pick Ed to win by late TKO or submission. Next is Vincent Morales versus Darko Rodriguez, and there's not much to say about this fight. Vincent's the better striker, Darko's the better jiu-jitsu guy. I think that Darko will pull this to the ground, whether he has full guard or not, and I think he's going to win by sub. I think on the ground he's way better than Vince, and I think eventually he catches him in submission, so I'm going to pick Darko. Next we got Bobby Green versus Rafael Fazeev, and... You know, people think Fazeev is, like, this super next-level guy, and if he can beat Green, like, really easily, I'll think that too, but... I mean, people need to remember, he does have a lot of decision wins, and it's like, even though in his last fight, he won by, like, super fast knockout, I do think he started to slow down in, um, I forget which fight it was, but, uh, the fight before the one where he won by knockout, and I think if Green can kind of weather the early storm and just use his wrestling, which he will use when he needs to, I think Green has a huge advantage on the ground. I think he's the much better overall grappler. And he just needs to be smart with his attack. I think if Green can kind of survive the first, but continually pressure Fazeev and, you know, tire him out a little bit, I wouldn't be surprised if Green can win by, like, third-round submission. So I'm going to pick Green. I think that he uses his striking and wrestling good mixed together, and I think he's going to win by third-round submission with, like, a rear naked choke. On the main card, we got Song Yadong versus Casey Kenny, And to me, I think Song Yadong should be on a three-fight losing streak. I mean... 
he should have lost against uh um f what's his name um uh Cody Stamen like he clearly lost that fight he won one round and lost the other two and I think he also lost a point in that fight which makes it even more insane that he won it and then he also clearly lost to Marlon Vera and then he lost his last fight so you know his record's like five one and one in the UFC but really it should be like four and three so to me Casey Kenny you know his record's like six and two in the UFC and you know, his last fight with Dominic Cruz was competitive. Like, he clearly lost. I don't know why that fight was a split decision, but it was competitive in a fight that he lost. And that's saying a lot, to be competitive with Dominic Cruz. And because of that, I'm leaning towards Kennedy. I think that his conditioning is much better, and I think his grappling is much better. I think Kennedy's a guy who knows how to mix up striking with grappling really well. And we've seen Song Yadong struggles with the grappling. He has good takedown defense, but if you can get him to the ground, he really has a hard time getting back to his feet. And I think Case Kane just needs to be smart with his attack. If he just makes his kickboxing with wrestling, which he does. He will do that. He's not stupid. He doesn't just favor one thing. I think he'll tire um, Song out, and he, I wouldn't be, even be surprised if Casey gets like a third round submission with like a rear naked choke or a guillotine or something like that. So I'm going to pick Kennedy to win either a 29-20 decision or a late submission. So I'm going to pick Casey. Next we got Tisha Torres versus Angela Hill. And to me, the biggest thing for this fight is I just think that Tisha has a big advantage in the grappling. I think that She's not stupid either. The striking's probably dead even. If anything, Angela Hill probably has a slight advantage because she's got longer arms and legs. But I think Tisha can get this fight to the ground as long as she's smart about how she goes for the takedowns. And I think once it's there, I think she can either keep Angela Hill down there or win by submission. So I'm picking Tisha to win either a 30-27 decision or Angela Hill tries to rush back to her feet eventually and Tisha will take her back and win by rear naked choke. Next we got Michael Chiesa versus Vicente Luque and to me, this is the thing. I think Vicente Luque is probably the slightly better fighter than Chiesa, but we've seen consistently most of his losses have come from guys that just out grapple him. You know, other than the Steven Thompson fight, pretty much every fight that he's lost in the UFC was because the guys were just out wrestling him. And um, I forget what fight it was, but um, oh, it was the Randy Brown fight where even though Vicente was lighting up Randy's legs, um, Randy was able to get takedowns here and there, and then Vicente, you know, he would get back to his feet, but I'm just saying, even though Vicente was lighting him up, Randy Brown was able to take him down consistently, and that just shows me that, you know, he he's decent getting back to his feet, and he has good chokes, but he still struggles with strong wrestlers, and I think that's the biggest thing, is that Chiesa is a really strong wrestler, and I think, you know, Vicente... He does have some one-shot knockouts, but he is more of a volume guy he, with just good power, which is why he's able to just do it really quick. My biggest fear is I just think Michael Chiesa will be able to get this guy to the ground repeatedly and win a decision. We saw when he fought, like, RDA, and we've seen him fight other guys where it's like, you know, if it's three-round fights especially, I think he can push whatever pace he wants. Like, Chiesa has great conditioning, and in a three-round fight, he can just kind of be a little reckless with the takedowns as long as he doesn't leave his neck out there because Vicente is really good with the guillotines. I think Chiesa can get this fight to the ground consistently and repeatedly and win at least a 29-20 decision, if not a 30-27 decision. So I'm picking Michael Chiesa. Next, we got Jose Aldo versus Pedro Mahoz. And this is kind of like the Chiesa thing where it's like, I don't think Jose Aldo loses many three-round fights, in my honest opinion. Like, he lost to Volkanovski, but... I think that he was at such a big wrestling disadvantage in that fight that that's what that was. In this fight, it's just going to be kickboxing. And I favor Jose Aldo against most people in a three-round kickboxing fight because his conditioning only really starts to fail him when it gets in rounds four and five. In three-round fights, he can usually win two of those three rounds regardless of which rounds they are. His conditioning is good enough to win them, and I think he's still high enough level to beat almost anybody in a three-round fight. And because of that, I'm going to pick him to win this fight. I think that he's got the speed advantage over Mahoz. And I think he's just a little more technical than Mahoz. I think, you know, Mahoz can definitely come on late in the third and maybe get a third round finish. I have no doubt for that. But I think Aldo picks him apart for the first two rounds and just wins a 29-20 decision. Finally, we got Derek Lewis versus Surreal Gone. And this fight's honestly super easy. It's either Gone is going to outpoint Derek or eventually take him to the ground and submit him. Or Derek's just going to catch him with a huge shot. This is kind of just like the Hall versus um, Strickland fight from last week. And... Just like that fight, I'm leaning towards Lewis. I think that Lewis just needs to land one huge shot as where Gon has to kind of be perfect the whole time. You know, Gon can definitely do that. He is probably the better overall fighter, but we've seen Derek can catch guys. He's good on the ground. He's good at sweeping guys and landing huge shots. 
And I feel like if God isn't willing to commit to strikes, then Derek will eventually catch him with something. And because of that, I'm going to pick Derek Lewis to win by KO in the first two rounds. I mean, like I said, realistically, Gon will be perfect for five rounds, like Strickland was, and just win a decision, or eventually get this fight to the ground and win by sub. But I'm going to pick Derek. I think eventually he's going to catch Gon and um, knock him out with one shot. So I'm going to pick Derek Lewis to win by KO in the first two rounds. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Please like and subscribe.